Third time is going to be the charm with this. So this video is just intended to take you through the basics of fusion. Um, I'm not going to spend too long on anything. It's just kind of one of these last minute watch this and remember how to do some stuff. So to start a sketch, you click on the plus sign. We default to the XY plane, um, which is this plane here with the green and the red to create our sketches. Um, all Obviously, all of your sketch tools are up here. Remember that there's more stuff in the drop-down menu that you might not use as much. So for example, we have the two-point rectangle, but you can also do that center rectangle, which allows you to plot the center and then drag it out to a corner. Okay, that might be valuable. This is also where you would find the mirror the circular and the rectangular patterns. Okay, um, so that's where you would find all that under the create menu. To uh, constrain things in the sketch, well, let's do, we'll do an extrude. Um, and remember with your extrude, there's other things in that drop down menu as well. So um, like create form, extrude, revolve, sweep and loft are found in that menu. We haven't really looked at ribbing and webbing, but should you see a question that involves rib and web, that would be under that same dropdown. Um, I know some of you guys discovered the pipe and the coil uh, tools, so you wanna remember where they are. Um, I'm just going to extrude that up just to give us something to work with, with the, for the purpose of of this. Now I'm going to create another sketch. Um, remember you can create a sketch on any of the existing surfaces as well as the planes. So I will put on here, we'll do a polygon. Um, remember that we have different polygons. So that is set for a hexagon. Um, so that's what I'll set it for. And um, I'll extrude that um, we'll extrude that in. So we'll like cut this hexagonal hole through there. Um, remember this dialog box over here on the right. So you can uh, extrude in different directions. Um, so you can extrude in one side, two side. You could do a symmetric extrusion. You can also specify the exact distance of the extrude and you can change whether it's cut, join, or a new body. And um, you know that we had to do a couple of things with the chair where we had to make sure that we had a new body because it automatically joins the body together um, when you extrude on like that. Uh, all right, so in the modify panel, we have a bunch of things available there. Um, press pull is another way of doing your extrudes. You have your fillet, so we can fillet the sides and um, and you would specify the radius of the fillet. Um, so I don't know what we'll do. We'll do two millimeter fillet and you can apply that to, there you go. Now I can apply it to multiple sides. Oh. There we go. And um, I can make all of that a two millimeter fillet on the side and that gives it that nice rounded look. So that's what your fillet does. Um, we have our shell feature um, where you would pick a face and then the direction to shell. I don't think this is gonna shell because I already put a hole in it, um, but there's shell. Um, combine would be if you have two different bodies and you want to combine them into one. So for example, if I create a sketch on this side here and we'll do like, a, we'll do a circle and I extrude that. Um, there we go. Um, it's automatically going to join the bodies together. Um, so I'll go, to, I'll go ahead and let it do that. Um, now, I might want to, oh, that's really kind of interesting. That's pretty cool. Um, you can split the bodies. And so right now I have the one body. This would split it into two. So you want to pick the body to split, which in this case is the whole thing. The splitting tool, I might make that plane. And um, you can always turn it and see 
And now I have two bodies and you can tell when I highlight them that they, they highlight separately as two different bodies. And if I expand the drop down over here, you can see that they're two bodies. If I wanted to combine those bodies back again, I can click them and combine them. And now you see there's just the one body. Now it's body two. So you can um, do that. There are also chamfers. Um, I don't think we did too many um, of the other things in there, um, and I don't know that you'd see too much of that on your exam. Under the assemble panel, remember your joints um, that you can, now there are no components to assemble in this design, so it's not going to let me do it. Um, I could go ahead and split that body though, so we'll split it on... That's the body we're gonna split and I'll split it on that plane. Um, now, I think it'll let me put a, no, it's still not gonna let me put a joint in there because they're already attached. Um, but remember what the joints are. There's like a revolve joint, there's the rigid joint. You can also place a joint origin in there. Um, and then a rigid group, uh, like it takes the components and treats them as a single object when they're moved or the joints are applied. So um, that's something I kind of remember that I had a question on like a rigid group. Remember too that you can always come over here into Fusion and you can hover over the different things. The help won't be available to you during the exam, but I believe you can still um, hover on the, the drop down menus. Remember what we can do. We've done a lot of work with offset planes, but there are also different kinds of planes that you can construct. So the more math background you have, the more you'll be comfortable using this. I can put a tangent plane on there. And so if I want to put a tangent plane on the outside of that circle, and then I can, um, use, I guess, use that as the reference plane. That, that'll that work. Um, and you can see that I've constructed that plane tangent. That's one of the things that you can do. Um, I don't know what the chances are that you'll see like that, but um, mid plane you could see. So I can put a plane right in between. Oh, make sure I see the whole thing over here. There we go. And um, the plane goes right through the middle like so. Um, so that's under the construct tab. Uh, in inspect, we've used measure quite a bit. We've also used interference. So you would use interference when you've assembled more than one thing together. I actually don't remember getting a whole lot of questions on joints on mine, like maybe like a question about the rigid group. Um, but you would use the interference test to find out if you've put it together. Remember, we've also done the section analysis, and so you might be asked to do something like that as well. All right. Um, once you've put stuff together, um, one of the common ways that they ask you the questions, at least as I did it, um, is to have you assign a physical prop, a physical material and do that properties analysis um, of it. So right clicking on the body, you can choose the physical material. And again, we've done this a lot and we'll pick. There we go. Ceramic. I just, um, oh, let's make it porcelain and we can drag that and make it porcelain. And then you might be asked to find any number of, um, oh, what was that? uh, uh, things about it, but you would come over here to the properties and then you might be asked for the surface area, the density, mass, or volume. I think the one I was asked the most was the mass, um, but you might also be asked the volume if you're asked to alter the design. So you could download something, like download one of the files, and then what they'll tell you to do is go back into the timeline and um, take this I don't know what sketch I want. Um, okay, take that sketch, edit that sketch um, in such a way that you change, and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm double clicking on it. So change the diameter. And it's like, I don't know what I've clicked on now. Um, okay. So you would change the sketch in some way, edit the dimensions on the sketch, finish it, and then you might be asked to define the volume on it. So 
Uh, yeah, you got that. Now, something that I asked you guys to review in the email that I sent you was the uh, drawings, okay? And we haven't done drawings in a while, so I did want to touch on that. Um, to do a drawing, you do need to have something that is saved. So probably what they would do with the drawings is you would download the drawing and you would be asked to do something to the drawing. Um, so I'll just do the uh, Jojo pen design clicky body thing, okay? Because I can open that up. And we have, oh, we have a nice example of the joint in there. Um, and so you might need to create a drawing. So you go down to new drawing and from design and it will take whatever design is there. Remember what you have over here. Um, I, we in class have been changing it from ISO to ASME. Probably they will tell you on the exam what you need to do. Or you'll again, you'll open the drawing and it will already be like chosen for you. Um, what kind of units you want it in and what kind of size. And I've had you guys keep it to like size A, uh, A so that if we wanted to print them out. Um, I don't know what that error is. That's great. Um, and then you have your base view. Remember, your base is the front, which looks a little weird. Uh, and that's just how that was oriented in the design for her. And then you would come up here to the projected views, and it will ask you to select parent view. And then you get the uh, top, the isometric, and the right-hand side. Click the little green um, check mark and and uh, and then you're good to go um, then you might have to find particular dimensions and you can zoom in and out and so forth um, remember your dimensioning rules and this was the section of the exam that I bombed and so I don't remember what the questions were asking only that I knew how to do them and I didn't have any time to do them. So I wanted to make sure we went over uh, how the drawings worked because you will see some questions on drawings uh, on your exam. Um, make sure just in terms of the, the tips, and I know I sent you guys an email with that last minute advice on it, um, but the exam is really, really fast paced. Um, it's unlikely that you're going to have time to answer every question, at least I didn't. And I coach students all the time on um, pacing themselves on exams and I screwed it up myself. Like I did not move on quickly enough from questions because I'm like, but I know how to do this and just spent too much time on something that I, I had hung up on something with it. Um, so uh, what you do know, um, you wanna make sure that like you are answering those questions. Be sure you get to look at all of the questions at least once and give all of the questions enough of your attention to be able to make that decision. Because what you don't wanna have happen is to have questions you never look at and then you're forced to guess on them when they're questions that you could have answered pretty quickly. They don't go in order from easiest to hardest and they're not gonna go in any particular order in terms of, what you know or what you might not know. And so a fairly easy question with a simple procedure could be later on in the test. You really wanna make sure that you are getting to those questions. Um, once you get to all the questions, then go back and go back to the ones that you're like, I know how to do this, but I was concerned about time. And then you don't leave anything blank, nothing blank at all. Um, and I know I said in the email, the question you guess on could be the question that tips you over. So you guys know I haven't made a secret. Like I passed this on the pass mark because I didn't really manage my time well. Like I'm pretty sure I could have done better than, than on the pass mark. But what I did, I'm watching that clock. I went back and made sure that I marked off something. I threw in something for every question I had skipped. And I did skip a, a healthy number of questions. Some of those questions that I guessed on were probably correct. And they were what gave me those extra points that I needed to, to be able to pass. So you don't leave anything um, blank. And don't panic 
if there's stuff that you don't know. It's almost guaranteed you're going to see some stuff you don't know. So if you're a student that's used to understanding all the questions and used to feeling like, you, oh, like I got this, um, that's probably not going to happen with this. So don't panic. You don't have to get every question right to pass. Um, you guys know I bombed a whole section of it and still managed to pass. So stick to the plan. Just um, if you find yourself spending too long on a question, um, you, you move on to the next one and then you um, go back and, and you take it from there. So stick to the plan. Um, I and, and there's really like no serious pressure. I want you guys to take it seriously and I want you to do the best you, you can, but I'm sure you will because that, I mean, I picked you because I thought you would anyway. Um, but if you don't pass it, there might be an opportunity to retake it. I have to talk with Mathis about that, um, that there's a, a window of time for, for you to go back and retake it. So this was kind of a crash course um, reviewing what some of the stuff was in the drawings. Oh, with the drawings. Um, you can do section views and detail views. I think we covered this a little bit, um, but you can select your parent view and then um, specify, well, like that's kind of pointless, but um, there we go. And basically pull out like that little piece. So I pulled out a piece to look at the section and you can also do, um, oh, that was like a detail view. A section view like chops into it like so, and you end up being able to peek inside. So section and parent view up there. I don't think we've spent like a whole lot of time with that. Um, I can't remember. Anyway, um, just stick to the plan, do your best and good luck.